Hey, it's me, Matty P. Look, everybody has had some problems with the Black Spider. If you run it as the book wants you to, then the Black Spider never really meets the players until the end. And I've always said, that sucks. So my fix to that has always been introducing the Black Spider as early as possible. If you've watched this series of guides, hey, you already know that. But the reason that you want the players to meet the Black Spider early is so that they can learn to hate that villain and that villain can learn to hate the players. This is my guide to building that animosity through a custom side quest. In this side quest, the players are gonna meet the Black Spider in a derelict saloon for a midnight exchange of prisoners. You see, they're trying to get their friend Gundren Rockseeker back. And that's what they think is gonna happen, but oh no, the Black Spider's got other plans because the players are gonna get dramatically and predictably betrayed. So this one was written by Daniel K and me, and the illustrations or the maps were made by our community member, Virus. You can get this full PDF and the maps individually on Patreon for five bucks. I mean, five bucks. You get everything on my Patreon for five bucks. Check it out. All right. Here's how you run the adventure. Across this whole little side quest, you want to keep these three goals in mind. As long as you're moving towards these three goals constantly, no matter what happens, you're on the right path. You want the players to recognize the Black Spider as the villain. You want the players to hate the Black Spider. And you want the Black Spider to hate the players. I'd expect this side quest to kind of happen around session four or five of your Lost Minds campaign. And there are two things you need to accomplish before running this. The first thing is that when the players go to Phandalin, they need to meet the Black Spider in some capacity, whether that's as a friend, as a foe. She shows up to have a conversation. And that conversation is about, I want that puzzle box that you are carrying. And if you give me that puzzle box, I will give you Gundren Rock Seeker. But we're gonna do the prisoner exchange at this place called the Crossroads Saloon tomorrow at midnight. And if you're new to the series, you might be thinking, what puzzle box, what does that mean? Well, this is just the thing, the MacGuffin that we give to the players in the first session that the Black Spider needs to access the Forge of Spells. But before you run this side quest, you need to one, decide what's in the puzzle box, what's the, the very useful thing that's inside. You need to decide what is the guardian or challenge at the Forge of Spells. And you need to decide how does the thing inside the puzzle box help bypass that challenge. Imagine this, ding dong, it's the stroke of midnight. It's pouring down rain. It's absolutely bucketing. The sky's opened up and the players are outside this saloon. The rain is matting their hair to their skull. This is a really good opportunity for you to practice your weather descriptions. I want you to describe the purple sky, the puddling mud, the sounds, the smells. Just really get into it, it's good fun. So the players are sitting out there in the rain, plotting their approach to this building, the Crossroads Saloon. This is the meeting place when Azar said, hey, come here, I'll give you Gundren or whatever. So it is a three story building. In the basement on the bottom floor is this distillery room. It's kind of mechanical, it's got flasks and beakers and, and stuff in there. On the ground floor is the bar and it's got like a piano and some stairs and stuff. On the second floor is like the top floor is the gambling hall. This is where Nazar is waiting with Gundren and she is wary, but she could be surprised if the players approach from the right direction. Because there are three entrances to the Crossroads Saloon. The most obvious entrance at the front is those saloon doors. Now these are alarmed. So when they cross this threshold, Nazar has a spell cast on it so that she gets a signal in her brain. She goes, ah, they're here. Now, if they enter through those doors, then Nazar cannot be surprised because now she is on guard. But if the players go around the side, this side door, this staff entrance, it is locked. The players will need to make a lock picking check to open it. And if they fail, then from then on, they're gonna have to use a strength check to open it. And if they use strength, then the, the black spider is gonna hear that, isn't she? So she can't be surprised if they break it down, but she can be surprised if they pick the lock successfully. And here's what they'd find inside. The interior of this decrepit saloon is wooden and smells of mold. The bar takes up half the room, designed only to accommodate standing room for patrons. Shattered bottles and rotting furniture decorate this place. 
On this floor, if the players decide to stealth, then they're going to do so at disadvantage because the floor is so squeaky and decrepit. If the players look inside the piano at the far end of the room, they will find a magical hand crossbow, plus one to attacks and damage made with this weapon. But the thing is, it is strung with piano wire. So when they fire it, it actually emits a loud chord that could, you know, jeopardize some stealth missions. I don't have a name for this. Hand... Pianbo. <laughs> oh no, that's not the name. Somebody think of a name for me. <laughs> There's also two sets of stairs in this room. One leading down to the cellar from the uh, behind the bar and another one in the main patron area leading up to the gambling area. Downstairs in the cellar is some cool stuff mechanically. You can get down here in two ways. You could either come down the stairs behind the bar, that's fine, or if you're from the outside of the building, there's kind of like those, you know, those doors that open that way, cellar doors, um, and they're locked with a padlock. So you would have to pick the lock and get through. And if you fail that check, then you're gonna have to break the lock then, and that's gonna alert the black spider. Same as the, uh, as the staff door. But down here, Mate, it's worth it. You see, the Crossroads Saloon was manufacturing its own moonshine. So there's all this Walter White stuff down here. They've got the big flask, they've got kegs and other metal and glass things. I don't know how moonshine's made, but that's all the stuff that's down here. The thing is, there's still remnants of this very volatile stuff. And with a bit of an intelligence check, the players can work out how to weaponize this stuff. If your players are anything like mine, they're gonna to come to the conclusion themselves that they wanna blow this place to smithereens. Uh, so they can do that. This whole place is rigged to blow. Now what that means mechanically is that any characters on the cellar floor or on the floor above, which is the bar floor, they would have to make a DC 12 dexterity save. If they succeed, they take half of 4d6 damage. If they fail, they take the full 4d6 damage. And that's half of fireball's damage. And if any characters are on the very top floor, instead, they make a strength save. And if they fail, they fall prone as the, uh, like the building kind of lurches. Here's how the fuse mechanics work. I like this. So the players decide whether they want a long, medium, or short fuse. And they're represented by a D8, D6, or a D4. And then at dramatic intervals that you choose, you roll that dice. If you roll a one, then the explosion goes off. Now, I would suggest that you wait for dramatic moments or regular intervals. So you could set a timer, go guys, every two minutes of real time, I'm gonna roll this. Or you could say every round of combat, I'm gonna roll this. Or you could say every time somebody rolls a D20, I'm gonna roll this explosion dice. Also, if they wanna loot this room, they can find enough materials to make one bottle of alchemist fire if they make an intelligence check during a short rest. Here's alchemist fire from the book. Ta-da. On the second story upstairs in the gambling hall, this is where the black spider is waiting for the players. She has Gundren hooded, bound, ready to exchange for her mysterious puzzle box. She has a big poker table in the center of the room where she expects the puzzle box to be placed. She has an overturned table, a pool table, which she can take cover behind. There is debris because the roof has collapsed and there's this debris that is kind of a makeshift ramp all the way up to the roof if she needs to escape onto the ceiling. And also, there are three trapped tiles in this space. Here's how they work. With these three spaces on the map, these floorboards are rotting away. If any character, friend or foe steps here, they have to make a DC 11 deck save. If they succeed, they just hop happily to some adjacent square, their choice, go ahead. But if they fail, if they fail, they collapse. They fall waist deep into the floor. They take 1d6 bludgeoning damage. They are considered prone and their movement speed is reduced to zero for the remainder of that turn because they are considered grappled. But at the start of their next turn, they are no longer considered grappled and they can get up with half their movement and continue along their merry way. Now, before you run this scene, you've got to keep in mind the Black Spider's personality. She's not evil for the sake of evil. She's an adventurer. She's an entrepreneur, just like the players. She's just a lot more ruthless. So here's what she would say when they arrive. Oh, you've arrived. I was afraid you might have gotten lost out there in the rain. I thought maybe I would have to come and find you. And yet, here we are. There's all of you over there and just me over here. So I kindly ask you to place the puzzle box on the table and I will send your friend safely over. 
Then we may go our merry ways, me richer in pocket with access to the forge of spells, and you richer in spirit with your friend back. Though you may wish to set up camp in the saloon for the night if this rain keeps up. I would lend you my umbrella, but ah, sadly I only have this one. As a dungeon master, it's up to you whether this is actually Gundren Rockseeker or it could be a doppelganger. Now I talked about this previously in an old video, so I'd suggest just check that out. I'm not going to bore you with the same stuff over and over. But whatever you decide, we're going to end in combat. Even if the players decide to go, actually, no, we're not going to give you the puzzle box. It's still going to end in combat. The black spider can't have this loose end out there. So here's the tactics for your black spider fight here. Number one rule, she can't die. Fudge her health. If she gets close to dying, then, oh wow, she doesn't. She has this escape maneuver in her back pocket. It is a custom item I gave her, a necklace which she can grip and then rip as a, as a legendary action, I think, in this custom stat block. Uh, so if she gets to low health, she does that. She pulls this rip cord and she teleports away. She gets to live. If the black spider has her doppelganger ally with her, Monteith, then his goal in combat is just to keep the melee characters off her. She is a squishy wizard. If anybody gets in punching distance, then she'll, she'll be in trouble. If for some reason she doesn't have a doppelganger ally in this fight, then perhaps she could throw her staff, her spider staff on the ground, and it could transform into a giant spider. And that spider would have the same goal as Monteith, keeping the melee characters out of her face. Now, of course, the staff, as written, doesn't have this ability, but you're, the, you're literally the dungeon master. Do whatever you want. The Black Spider's main goal in this combat is to acquire that mysterious puzzle box. That's all she wants. She will focus on the character that has it, do everything in her power to acquire it. When she does have it, she's going to focus on keeping it and killing the party. She is trying to be lethal here. During this combat, remember that goal of making the players hate the Black Spider and vice versa. Be smug when you role player. Use the player character's names. She knows a little bit about these characters and she will quip with them, especially when they're attacking her or she's attacking them. Build that personal relationship. Since the Black Spider is a very squishy wizard, she's going to need to use the terrain to her advantage. So she could use this overturned pool table on her side of combat to take three quarters cover. Mechanically, that means plus five to her AC and plus five to her deck saves against range attacks while she's there. Or she could climb all the way to the shingles on the very tippy top of the rooftop up this, this, uh, this difficult terrain ramp of debris. When she's up there, she'll have half cover against range attacks, which is plus two and plus two, respectively. Now, but the thing is, the reason this ramp is here, strategy-wise, is because I was worried that the players might try and cast silence and just neuter all of her spells if she didn't have, like, an extra escape out there. So if the players cast silence, she can go up through here and keep keep blasting spells. Now, there's also the fact that these hazards, these hazard tiles that are around, she could use her suggestion spell to force a character to walk in there and just stun them if they, if they fall. But listen up, because this is the most important part of the video. This is the most important part of the PDF. This is a question I get asked all the time in comments. So let me clarify once and for all. The puzzle box doesn't really matter. I mean, yes, it's really important to the black spider. She wants it, it's important to her, it's her goal to get. But what I mean is at the end of this session, it doesn't matter if the puzzle box is in her possession, or it doesn't matter if the puzzle box is in the player's possession, or it doesn't matter if the puzzle box is like burnt in a fire at this point, because it would have already served its purpose. The true purpose of the puzzle box, story-wise, is just an excuse to have this interaction, to have this personal relationship between the villain and the players. We gave the players this puzzle box that the, the villain really, really wants. So she meets them in Phandalin. She arranges to trade with them. We have a bit of a sparring match in this session. And then when we finally get to the, you know, the ultimate showdown in the Wayvecko Cave, then, hey, look at this. This is Nizar. This is the Black Spider. This is the lady that's caused us so much trouble that we've met three or four times so far. Oh, we're so vexed by her. But if you hadn't have had the puzzle box, if you hadn't had this reason for the players to meet the villain, it would have been, oh, here's a random encounter. <laughs> Our sponsor today is the GM Companion by Dragon Shield. This thing might look like a very fancy box, but it's so much more. Yes, it's got space for your books and your module and your, your iPad. You can store it all in here and also your minis in these foam safety inserts that stack all the way up. But 
it's wrapped up in the best GM screen that I've ever seen. This is now my official GM screen. I use this all the time now. So it's five-sided, so it's got a great shape at the table. Behind it, it's got space for these custom inserts. They look so nice. You can put your own stuff in here, whatever you need, rather than relying on Wizards of the Coast, you know, preloaded ones. You can also put in your phone here in this little slot. But my favorite part is how it lets you use vertical space at the table. So it comes with dry erase markers and these little white cards and you can insert these into the top of the screen. You can use these for all kinds of things, not just initiative trackers. Well, oh, look, I wanna get creative with this and I wanna show you more. So we're gonna do a full review of this product in the next couple of weeks and I'll show it off. But for now, check this out at your local TTRPG store or you can find it at the link downstairs below. It's genuinely worth checking out. If you wanna access the PDF module for this and all of the cool maps drawn by Virus, like all these patrons down here, then you just gotta sign up to Patreon. It's matthewperkins.net forward slash Patreon. And if any patrons out there know how to use Foundry or Roll20 or any of those programs really well, and you wanna package up these maps so it has like the dynamic lighting, all that kind of stuff, please do so. But please share it with me so that I can post it up on Patreon as well and share it with everybody. Like. I don't know how to do that stuff, but I'm sure some of you are wizards. Anyway, click subscribe, like, all the other things that people say. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. Bye.